Okay, so in a moment we'll put the heat shrink tubing on the connector that we just started and then do the other half of our solders. But before we do that, I'd like to show you why you can't do this the traditional way of heating the base metals and then feeding the solder into the heated base metals. Here I've got uh, some helping hands to hold up the wire we're joining to the connector. So if I go to heat here first, and then feed the solder into that, look what happens. I can get it on there clean. I'm not sure how clear that that is on camera. Let me pan it around. But even in that relatively short amount of time, look how badly we damaged the plastic connector. And that was doing just one of them. If we did all five of them like that, the plastic part of the connector would just hopelessly fall apart. It's never going to work that way. That The plastic connector simply can't take that. That's why we have to do it the way that we're doing it. Okay, so our next step is going to be to cut ten pieces of heat shrink tubing and then we're going to slip um, five, pieces, five pieces of that tubing over each of our wires, one piece over each wire. And we'll get to the other five pieces after we heat these five. Now we've placed our five pieces of heat shrink tubing, one on each wire, and we've left the other five on the bench for the moment. So let's go ahead and heat that up with our heat gun. And so now our critical next step, which we definitely don't want to forget before we solder the other half of our connector is we want to put the remaining five pieces of heat shrink that we have one on each wire and then once we're done soldering the other end we'll heat those down too so now at this point we're ready to solder the other six pin header on and I'm not going to repeat this on camera since it's basically the same process as the first one that we did. And so here we are after our second five solders. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in on those. So again, um, because we have to be so careful not to overheat the plastic. Um, another zoom in adjustment here. These are going to be semi-cold solders. There's really nothing you can do about it. You're not looking for something that's perfect here. You're, you're not going to get a, a medical grade or aviation grade solder here. But hopefully, you'll at least get something that reliably will hold, and that'll really be good enough for our purposes. Another thing you might notice is that even with only applying heat to these connectors for a moment, some of these might loosen up. For example, look at the pin for this yellow one. It's already sliding. And I only heated these for a moment. So uh, in, in a moment I'll show you a way to, some of the ones on the other side are loose too, so in a moment I'm going to show you a, a way to remedy that. But first let's make sure everything slid out fully, and then we're going to heat shrink in place our remaining pieces of heat shrink tubing. Okay, so now that we've um, heat shrinked our other side and our solders are all done, uh, we noticed that uh, some of our pins are slightly loose because we heated our connector a little bit more than we would have liked to. So um, much like a, uh, and this is going to kind of be a ghetto homebrew solution to it, but it will work, uh, much like a, a mouth guard would secure teeth by holding them all together, if we take out our super glue and we thoroughly layer each side, that way they would all have to slide out for one of them to slide out. And let's do the other side also. 
So you should see a slight super glue bridge, I'm not sure if that's visible on camera, between each of the wires. And now we'll turn around and do the other side. And now we're going to let that dry uh, for probably at least a good half hour. And so we've waited a while for our glue to dry now. And it's still a tiny little bit tacky, but that's okay. Um, our pins are all nice and secured in place now, and our connector's complete. So we can take our breadboarded circuit. For example, here we have the breadboarded version of the 18F4550 USB demo board. And we can quickly and easily plug our programming connector into our breadboard. And we can very easily program with the PIC kit 2 or 3 now. So this is a definite thumbs up.